Dear students, in this module, I'll be reviewing the sequence alignment topics and we'll see what we have looked at and we'll see the usefulness of each of the techniques that we have understood. So we started with understanding and appreciating the fact that sequences are very important and are a source of great insight into the biological systems. The sequences can be from the DNA, RNA, and protein molecules. So first, we need to obtain these sequences experimentally and then organize them into databases for storage and then making them available online for utilization by fellow researchers and the community. So how do we obtain this information is very important. For the genomes and the RNA, we do the next generation sequencing or whole genome assembly, while for proteins, we do admin degradation or mass spectrometry. Similarly, we store this in information in online databases that are available to other people as well. This information is very useful in comparing sequences such as protein homology or DNA homology. So as I just mentioned, to obtain the sequences, you may have to do certain experimental protocols which involve next generation sequencing for obtaining the genome sequences. For the protein sequences, you may just want to go the way of mass spectrometry. To store this sequence information, first you need to convert the data output by these experimental protocols into the digital format. Most of the modern day instruments already do it for you and they provide you with data on a computer. So once the data is available to you in digital format, all you have to do is convert it into a database. So a database is simply a digitally stored an organized set of data that is available for query and analysis. So several such databases exist and they are very useful in sharing the information across the globe. Towards accessing this information, several online portals and tools are available which you can use such as XPSI. So once you go to XPSI, you can find out sequences for the genomes, for the proteomes, for the RNA, as well as look at the structure for each of the molecules. So you can download this information and then use it as well. So that was the information extraction from the experiment and its storage in the databases. So once these databases are built, now the next step is the analysis of this data. The analysis of such sequence information can help you to look at sequence similarity or sequence comparisons, which can shed some light on the evolutionary history of these sequences as well as the phylogeny. More so, such sequence information and comparison can help you to predict the function of proteins and genes. So if two or three sequences have a similar sequence and a high homology, then we may guess that their function may also be the same. So in conclusion, sequence information can help us obtain critical insights into the biological systems and we can draw some very useful conclusions from it. Moreover, this process is called sequence alignment in which we compare the sequences. Sequence alignment uh, comprises of local and global alignment and there are several algorithms which are available in the form of online portals for ease of utilization. And lastly, once the local or global alignment is done and the comparison is performed between sequences, it can help you to look at the function of these molecules as well. 